Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Pastor Frank Demore bringing you the connections between Bible prophecy and current events. Today is November the 13th, 2019. Please go over to my website because I have videos there that are not on YouTube. And the reason why they're not on YouTube is because the YouTube people like to take off videos on subjects that they don't like. And so I made it possible that you could see the video, but you have to go over to my website to see it. Now, once you go over to my website, you'll see the cover of my book and the back cover. That's a documentary that I wrote on Bible prophecy and current events, and it is a book that will help you understand how close we are to seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. Just scroll down, you'll see the link there. Click the link in the book will be downloading to your computer, depending on your speed. Now you see here that I put up a note. And the note is, let's test what you know. And so when you go over to my website, there's going to be a host of different news articles there. And just challenge yourself. I'm going to scroll down and you'll see what I'm talking about. Because it is very important that we keep on the watch. And what I mean by that is Jesus, when he was still on the earth, kept telling his disciples, and the disciples wrote it down, that's what we find the messages in the Bible, about keeping on the watch. What did he mean by keep on the watch? Well, he gave them a list of things that were going to take place in the last days. And when people saw those things come to fruition, we would know his second coming is very, very close. So here's a list of some of the scriptures of keeping on the watch that Jesus told us. It was actually a command, not if you have time, but keep on the watch. It's for our own good. And as you keep on the watch, that it doesn't really help much if you don't know what to watch for. And so reading the Bible and keeping on the watch goes hand in hand. So take a look at some of these other scriptures. When you go over to my website, you'll see that I highlighted watch therefore. And every place there's the Lord telling us to keep on the watch, that's been highlighted. So for you who don't know anything about Bible prophecy, maybe you don't know anything about the command from Jesus Christ about keeping on the watch, there you go. It's right in front of you. One of the things that I keep people abreast of is the Psalm 83 war as prophesied by our Lord in the Old Testament. It's one of the battles that haven't been fulfilled yet. Now, this section right here that you're looking at is from my book, Signs Showing Us the Psalm 83 War is Just Around the Corner. When you look at the, the photo there, you'll see it numbered 1 to 10. And what I've done is I showed you who this psalm says that are going to attack the nation of Israel in the last days. Now, for what I'm doing today, just take a look at number 8 there. It says, Philistina, who are the Palestinians and the Hamas and the Hezbollah. Those are the people right now that are dwelling in the Gaza Strip. And the Gaza Strip is a time bomb waiting to go off. Now what we know is something is going to happen to force all of these Israeli neighbors to come down and attack Israel all at once, thinking that they're going to destroy the nation of Israel. It even says when you read the prophecy that they'll say, let's go down and eliminate the name of Israel so they don't even exist anymore. I'm not sure if you've been watching the news, but the people who are listed in this Psalm 83 war are in the brink of forming a Confederate army and attacking the nation of Israel. The prophecy, when you read Psalm 83, talks about all of these nations forming a confederacy against Israel to wipe them out. It says they will be calling for the destruction of the nation of Israel. And again, if you have been watching the news, keeping the Lord's command, knowing what's going on when it talks about current events and Bible prophecy, linking them together, then you will have heard a lot of the information that I'm already talking about. But there's definitely a target on the nation of Israel 
and we're starting to see the situation, especially in the Gaza Strip, ratch up, which no doubt in my mind, I can't tell you exactly how long it will be, but it's a prelude to the coming Psalm 83 war. Now, keeping in mind now that I showed you number eight is the Gaza Strip, I'm going to bring you to the connection here, and this way you'll see for yourself. Take a look at this article. It says, watch terrorists in Gaza rain down 200 rockets on Israel, sirens wail in Tel Aviv. So I'm going to go over and click to this article, and you'll see right here, Watch terrorists in the Gaza rain down 200 rockets on Israel's sirens wail in Tel Aviv. Now, it's interesting that the mainstream media, you'll hardly see any of this type of news. And one of the reasons why that is the case is because they don't like Israel for the most part. And when they do report, you'll see that it's bias against the nation of Israel. So I'm going to play the video so that you can see what's happening in Tel Aviv right now as the people mentioned in Psalm 83 begin to rain down hundreds of these missiles. So I'm going to stop that video right there. Now, here's another news article that I want to bring to your attention. Islamic Jihad says, not ready for ceasefire. PM Israel will do what's needed. And so one of the prophecies talks about when they shall call peace and safety, sudden destruction is going to come. This is what Paul wrote down. And we've been seeing off and on the call for peace and safety between Israel and the Palestinians and peoples in the Psalm 83 theater, if you want to say. In other words, the bordering nations around Israel. That's who we know is going to be attacking Israel. So let's go to the next article from the Jerusalem Post. Israel threatens to assassinate Islamic Jihad leader in Damascus. Report. Now, why would Israel want to do this? Well, Israel has been attacked on and off for years, and they're not going to stand by and just watch their people arbitrarily be picked off, and now these barrage of rockets like we've seen in the past, and they're starting up again. So what they do in trying to eliminate the cause, which is the leaders of these groups, they go in and try to take out the leaders. And when they do that, it just causes more attention to the Middle East and more tension also in the Middle East with the bordering neighbors who are Arabs that don't like what the Israelis are doing. So the Palestinian, this is their leader, and so they threaten they were going to take him out. And the reason why is because Israel is seeing these rockets fall on their people. And they promised, and Israel, when they make a promise, they always keep it. And so if the rockets do keep coming, Israel is going to initiate their plans and take out the people responsible for giving the orders of sending these rockets to Israeli territory. But again, when you see articles like this, just understand that this 
prelude to the Psalm 83 war. Incidences like this are forming the path that will finally bring this prophecy to fruition. So moving now to the next article, Egyptian mediators launch bid to secure Israel-Gaza truce. So again, trying to make this peace and safety between the Palestinians living in the Gaza Strip and Israel. And so in the back of your mind, keep what Paul wrote down to us about when they shall call peace and safety, as I already indicated to you. Then sudden destruction will come. It doesn't say that they're going to find peace. It says sudden destruction. Well, what is that? Well, it's war. One of the wars that haven't been fulfilled, and that's what we're discussing today, Psalm 83. Also keep in mind that Egypt is mentioned in the Psalm 83 war. So if things escalate, there's no peace between these people, something will happen to cause Egypt to come down with their brothers to try to wipe out the nation of Israel. One of the reasons why I'm not putting this type of video on YouTube is because when I discuss Israel and the Palestinians, YouTube makes excuses that I'm talking about hatred when I'm not. All I'm doing is connecting what the Bible says compared to the current events. So YouTube is actually censoring me using the fact that they're saying this is hatred. I'm not talking about hatred. The hatred is coming from the Israelis to the Palestinians, from the Palestinians to the Israelis. It's not coming from Frank Damore. I wish these people would have peace. Because peace is the only way to live. Love is the only way to live. Not hatred and violence. So let's go over to this next article. Israel under attack as over 160 rockets fired from Gaza Strip by Palestinian terror groups Islamic Jihad. Netanyahu, who is the Prime Minister of Israel, says prepare for days of fighting. So again, just announcements. And one of the other prophecies that you'll find in Matthew chapter 24, you'll see it in Luke 21 and in Mark 13, is wars and rumors of wars. That's what we'd be hearing, and we're hearing a lot about rumors of wars that may be coming. So what you're looking at is just a byproduct of the missiles that have been sent over in to Israel and some of the destruction that these missiles are causing. So as Israel is preparing for several days of fighting after over 160 rockets were fired from the Gaza Strip into the Jewish state Tuesday following the targeted assassination of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad leader Baha Abdu al Atta in a precision Israeli airstrike. So I noticed that one of the difference between the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip and the Israelis when Israel is attacked, they go after who's responsible for giving the order for the attack. Whereas in the Gaza Strip, the Hamas and the Hezbollah, what happens is the leaders strike anyone in Israel. They don't care who they kill, whether it be women, children, they just send the missiles right in and whoever gets killed by the missiles, it's fine with them. And please keep in mind, I am not an advocate of violence. I wish it would stop. And I know this is going to stop when the war takes place, the Psalm 83 war. Because in that war, we see that Israel probably will take a hit from these massive armies that will be coming down, but they're not going to be wiped out. That's what we know for sure, because Israel will still be alive as a nation when the Ezekiel chapter 38 war takes place. And that war involves nations who are not listed in the Psalm 83 war. They are nations that do not border the nation of Israel. For example, Turkey, Russia, Iran, and so forth, who are also in the news quite a bit lately, if you've been watching the news. So as these rockets pour down, and they're still being poured down, by the way, Israel sends over the jets. You'll see the headline, Israeli Air Force brings the thunder. Numerous terror targets reduced 
to rubble. So the headline, and of course this picture will speak for itself, retaliation for violence against the Israelis, prelude to Psalm 83. Now there's other news, I'm going to be scrolling down, this is what you'll see when you go over to my website, I'm going to scroll down because I wanted you to see this, it says download a thousand missiles on Israel. This is news that you really need to see and you're only going to see it when you go over to my website and click the download, it's a video, you click that you'll understand why I wanted you to see this. What everyone should be doing who loves Jesus and just generally loves people is pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord told us to do. And the reason why he told us is obviously because the people living in Jerusalem have no peace at all because of the fighting, the constant tensions between peoples. And so as Christians, please pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And when is that peace going to take place? Well, I can tell you for sure. At the end of the seven-year tribulation, when Jesus Christ steps on the Mount of Olives, that's when the peace, full peace, everlasting peace will begin because Jesus will go into Jerusalem and take his seat as King of kings and Lord of lords and reign on earth. He came the first time as king, but he didn't actually reign. And there was a reason for it because all the rest of the prophecies had to be fulfilled. The requirements of the book of Revelation had to be fulfilled. But when he steps on a Mount of Olives, that's when peace in Jerusalem and around the world will finally take place. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget, go over to my website, BibleProphecyMan.com or EndTimesResearchMinistry.com and scroll down and watch the thousand missiles on Israel. So there you have it, just a little bit of prophecy in one day. And if you keep coming back to my website and coming back to my YouTube channel, I'll keep giving you the connections of current events with Bible prophecy to help you get ready for the Messiah's return. He is going to come. Satan doesn't want you to believe that. It's too bad. He's the father of the lie. That's what Jesus told us. And all he's going to try to do is get it to make you believe that Jesus is not coming back. He's going to try to make you believe there's no hell. He's going to try to make you believe there's no heaven. It's all a lie. He's been doing it ever since the garden, and he's never going to stop until the Lord takes him physically via his angel and lock him up in chains for a thousand years. Then after that, the Lord is going to get rid of him completely. And what we know is the lake of fire, where the false prophet's going to be, the Antichrist is going to be, and anyone who rejects Jesus as the true Messiah, the creator of everything. We'll talk to you later. God bless.